So, you know, I've, I've been through all that training and whatever. I got out before 9-11, so I didn't have to go fight in Iraq or anything like that. But I've been through all that. I've been through the academy because I worked adult corrections first after, you know, after a few years. But I worked adult corrections. I've been through the academies, you know what I'm saying? I know what it's like to be in stressful situations, fight people all the time. Then I worked in juvenile services. And, you know, I've supervised for a lot of years. There's, we had a school in that building. I've done force protection in the Middle East. So, like, I know I, I've done a lot of, you know, training, and there's things I know about stressful situations. One thing I know for a fact is that even someone who's trained to shoot misses a lot in a, in a live situation. Mm-hmm. Even someone who's trained for it, been training for years, misses a lot, especially when someone's shooting back at you. All right? Because <laughs> that's the one thing you can't really train for. To say that, like, we need to arm teachers is stupid because, because, first, what's going to happen? Well, let me just back up to something even simpler than this. Where, is, where are those weapons going to be stored? All right? All right. Like I, said, I, work in the juvenile, I work in the juvenile detention center and in the jail where the dudes could, like, they would try to, like, take your radio off your hip. If, if this weapon is on your hip, you got to have the special holster that locks the teacher's so, like, let's say it's a female teacher. So that means they can't wear dresses. Like, they got to change the whole dress code. And is this thing visible? Is it out to where anyone can reach over and touch it, theoretically? Because uh, kids do stupid stuff. Yes. And, and is the teacher going to take something that the kid is just doing stupid and shoot them? Or is a teacher going to come in and not have to sneak a gun in the school because the teacher wants to shoot the kids or the other teachers? Where is this thing going to be? Where is it stored? Is it stored at their home? Is it stored in the school? If it's stored in the school, who's who's the uh, armorer that's going to be uh, signing <laughs> out these weapons and checking these weapons? Like people don't think about this, right? This stuff. Cool. Learn, right? Like who? How, how often do these teachers have to go to the range? Like there's so many things that go into. Hey, just arm the teachers. No, don't just arm the teachers. How about you make the school make the school a harder target? Like, start with that. Right. Like, just start with that. Make it so that people can't just get in there. Like, or, like the one uh, recently, the, 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 the dude shot through the glass to get in. Okay, well, I'm sure there's a company out there making, making bulletproof glass for school doors. Right. Like, just make it more difficult for someone to even get into the place. You know, how do you, how do you keep terrorists from bombing a plane? You don't let them on the plane. Right. You know what I'm saying? So... Start with that. Don't don't go in like, oh yeah, we need to have more people with guns. I, okay, yeah, I understand. You do need that person when someone's out there shooting, but it doesn't need to be the teacher who's teaching our kids, you know, English and math or whatever, with a gun on their hip. Like it's it's a distraction also. And you want some seventy year old, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want a <laughs> seventy year old teacher who's just who's just there because she just needs something to do every day. Like she's supposed to come there with a gun on her. Right. My, my, my dad's 73. He's, 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 right. a sub, he's a substitute teacher in Nashville. You want him, you want him pulling out? <laughs> or, or, or do you want every teacher to be an ex-Navy SEAL or something? Are you going to pray? You know, no. like, there's this, this so, so many things wrong with this. We're worried about this, man. The kids still got to pay for lunch. Like, this is crazy. The, it it's crazy. feels so good to not be stressed, you know. Uh, we live at the beach. For a year, and I used to walk the community and watch the school kids just walking to school without a care in the world, you know, knowing that my friends back home, their kids are about to go through act- actor shooter drills. They're trying to explain you used to do it. tornado drills as when I was a kid. <laughs> right. And, and, when I, and when I lived in Alaska, when I lived in Alaska for three years when I was a kid, we did earthquake drills. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have a... I'm like, they're doing active shooter drills in school. Right. This is crazy. Right, right. Like, this and is the thing they have to practice for. And, and they all know what to do. And, and, and it's happening right. everywhere. I mean, it's, 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 just, it's sad to watch. It's hard to watch. That's why it's, you can't, we all, are, we all have trauma. Every black person yeah. in the U.S. has some trauma. They, they did it to us for abuse. We're trying to heal. And I think, you know, being outside the country, doing a good job of it. It's, it's taking time, but it's impossible to heal from trauma in the environment that caused trauma. 
Exactly. <laughs> Yes. And, and, hey, look, uh, to, to exactly to your point, man, you know, for years, like I said, I worked in juvenile uh, detention mm -hmm. and I saw so many, so many kids die. I, I've lost so countless kids mm -hmm. that I know. And the one thing we always knew that when these kids went back out on the street, no matter no matter what good we may have done for them, they were going right back into the same environment that put them yeah. where they were to begin with. Yeah. And it's, it's a cycle. It was an endless cycle. We obviously yep. kids come back over and over and over. And then all of a sudden they didn't come back because they got killed. Or they got too old, went to prison or whatever. But you, if you send people back into that same environment, then you're going to get the same results. That's it. That's gospel truth. That's gospel truth. So I, I encourage people to do whatever they can do to, to get out their environment. You know, if you're fearful of going overseas for good, just put your Big toe in the water. Go for a couple of weeks yeah. and see what it's like. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Give it, a, give it a try. You never know. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about one of the funniest things I heard when I mentioned someone I might be moving. They were like, "Come on, Will. You don't want to give up the American lifestyle." And you know, I don't know. To this day, I really don't know what he meant. I think he meant like I don't know what that is either. The stuff, because I was like, you right. know, I'm tired of police pointing guns at me, and <laughs> I'm tired of banks. Not not giving me loans because I live in the wrong zip code. I'm tired of my house not being as valued as much as it should be. If I lived in Virginia in the same house, my house would have sold for one point five million. But you know, I mean, I made money in my house. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't make that kind yeah. of money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because of, because of my zip code. So that's that's what I saw yeah. with the American lifestyle. I, I, I don't get it. And you know, these places they have stuff. You can buy a PlayStation here. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You can buy, buy Jordans, but you can get <laughs> right. You can get, yeah. you can get Jordans and all that good stuff. And then, uh, yeah. you know, uh, there's a grocery store here in Panama called Reba Smith. It's like you know Trader Joe's and the high ends. Basically, everything in there is important. So that's where I go whenever I want to get that thing from the U.S. that yeah. I really miss. I know they're going to have it. Other stores have it too. So, and a lot of times the stuff they have is nicer. Uh, the infrastructure here works, uh, you know. Uh, like yeah. One of the things that uh, that I enjoy about Panama is the banking system. They allow um, direct money transfers from one bank account to another bank account. It's like an app. It's like Cash App sending money yeah. to people. Right. And they don't write checks, you know. And and you know you can go up to a fruit vendor on the sidewalk, and he'll have his little information right there. You can send him money uh, right to yeah. his yeah. You know, and now they're about to start offering that in the U.S. I don't know if anybody's seen that Fed now type of thing, but people are afraid of it. They're like, oh, my God, you know, the, right, it's right, the sign right. of the devil. Cash is Y'all, look, the U.S. been cash for a minute. A long <laughs> time. Only, long poor time. Still got, only poor people still got cash. Right. That's, I'm not trying I to be offensive. Carrying no cash on me. <laughs> yeah. I would never have cash on me in the States. Now I have right. it here. Yeah, I yes. To, I've never had cash in the States. Yes, yes, I keep cash on me in Panama because they, they, they use the American dollar here, so it's the same yeah. money. Uh, exactly. But yeah, I, I I use I usually pull money out the ATM to use for spending money because the ATM fee is a lower fee than using a credit card or whatever and having those right, yeah. international. Yeah. Uh, fees put on place. So yes, I do do cash, and they take it. Like I said, they. They use the dollar here, yeah. so it's very cool. I, I hand them a twenty. They do the same thing they do in the states. Look, they do the thing. Like they, yeah, they do it here too. <laughs> they do it here too. Yeah. It's a, and and it's so the funny. other thing is like you you don't want to have twenties if you can avoid it, unless you're paying for right. something that's going to cost like an even hundred dollars or whatever. You right. don't want a twenty. Uh, most of the time, we got to carry like tens and less. Like I said, unless it's something that's going to cost close to twenty dollars, where I know I can get change because I make if you paying paying for something, it's like five dollars. You get them a twenty, man. They got to run around three different shops or whatever to try to get the change. Get change. Yeah, yeah. It's a, <laughs> yeah. It's a whole hassle. They be killing me. Yeah, yeah. I noticed. I, I learned to hustle on the, uh, the food delivery cats. They never have change, so I'm like, ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, you're, not, you're not keeping all yeah. this player. You're not keeping all right, this. Yeah, player. I'm gonna have smaller bills next time, homie. 
Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, they got stuff, you know, uh, they got airlines, you know, they fly places. You never heard of an airline, but it's better than what you're flying on if you're flying United and Delta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, my, my wife yeah, I've been on, me I've been on their airline a few times. She tripped me out uh, when she came back from the States because uh, she caught the red eye out of Dallas. And, you know, they woke her, they woke everybody up around 4.30 to sit on breakfast. And it was like omelets and pancakes. Oh, yeah. They gave me pancakes. Yeah. On the flight. <laughs> right, right. You know, the last time we took the flight when we moved here was Delta, and we flew first yeah. class. And they didn't feed us. <laughs> you know? We got drinks. Yeah. We got drinks. But yeah. I don't. What's, what's the? Uh, I, I know I can't remember offhand the name of the airline out of Panama. Copa. Copa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we flew. We flew from from when we were coming back from Bali. We flew. Cause we flew Copa to LA and then we flew Copa back from LA to uh, Panama. We, we, we nice. took the first class on the way back and you were right, man. Drinks, food. It was beautiful. We loved it. Loved yeah. it. Copa was nice. They know, how to, they, they know what they're doing on Copa. No doubt about yeah. it. Let me throw this plug out there for anyone that's traveling in the U S the Caribbean. Copa serves a whole lot of cities in the U S Baltimore, DC, yeah. Atlanta, whatever. Any Copa flight, uh, that you take out of the U.S. to a, a foreign destination, you can get up to a seven-day free layover in Panama City. So if you're going to Jamaica oh. for vacation, if you take Copa from Atlanta to get you to Jamaica, you can spend a week here for free and have two vacations. Nice. I didn't know that. All right. All right. Yeah. We'll make so sure I, uh, it's we'll make only sure for I that piece Actually, and make it short out of it. I don't know if it's... It may be for everyone. I've only only looked at it for uh, getting out of the U.S., but if you go to Cooper's website, right. they have the rules. It, it may be just they want anybody, because Panama's their hub. They want anybody yeah. coming to Panama. Yeah, people there. That, that's, yeah. that's, so Panama did, and then, uh, one of the things about Panama that I've discovered is a lot of Americans don't understand because they don't spend money on tourism. They don't, they're not trying to get you. They don't care. <laughs> Right. They got the they got the canal money, but now there is a push internally to try to start promoting more tourism. They've got the cruise ships coming to uh, yeah. Amador right off right outside my balcony. I see these giant cruise ships and everything, and then Cologne. So they're starting to get the tourism thing up, but they don't need it. Yeah. I mean, things here are nice. They have a good time, but they don't need it. They need a million dollars a boat. Yeah. Just think about it. And it's like. 40 boats waiting to get in on both sides. That's a million dollars. Yeah. And it can out 24 hours. It never takes yeah. it never takes time off. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. never takes time off. So yeah. they, they got a cash cow going on here. That was that was the yeah. reason yeah. why we moved here is because the economy is stable as can be. Stable, uh, yeah. Because Americans are gonna keep getting their goods at Walmart, so they gotta make it there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Americans well, I'm, gonna you, I'm gonna tell you what, man. <laughs> You're right, yeah, because they're yeah, they're, Americans and Canadians are leaving in droves. Mm -hmm. um, before before I wrap this up, I wanted mm -hmm. to just ask you um, first: What do you have any questions for me, and like in particular about like Ecuador and South? America? Yes, yes, yes. Ecuador. I'm very interested in traveling there. Tell me a little bit about where you are in Ecuador. Is it beach, city, countryside, foothills? Ecuador has. All of the above, as a nation, uh, I want to say Ecuador is about the same land mass as maybe I think Nevada or something like that. Um, maybe a little bit bigger, but the Andes run, runs right through the middle. So there's several large, larger or just bigger cities in the Andes. So like the second biggest city is the capital, which is Quito, and it's over nine thousand feet in elevation. So it's like it's hard to breathe up there. It's yeah. kind of like, uh, is it, it is the same in Colombia? Is it uh, Bogota? Bogota or, uh, is higher. Yeah, Medellin. Yeah. I think it's Bogota. Yeah. It's a little bit higher. I haven't been either yet. Right. And, you know, you have Cuenca, which is like a, a kind of a hotbed for expats. And then there's other towns and stuff along the uh, Andes. So on the west of the Andes is, um, I hope I get this right. I think it's the Sierra, where the land is a little flatter. Um, it's a little like, uh, because of the weather patterns, it's like it's really muggy and hot. 
and then you get to the coast and there's some more like hills and mountains along the coast but the coast has a bunch of different little microclimates so where we live here in salinas it's actually a desert you wouldn't wow. notice for the past month and a half because it's been raining like crazy because of some weird weather pattern that hasn't happened in so many years it's crazy with la nina and el nino whatever uh so it causes significant rain that we've been having for the past month and a half or so but it's that that's really odd it's really odd because this place is actually a desert and when we got here for almost you know the whole time we were here it was just brown everywhere um but it's right on the coast so like our building is on the uh boardwalk um our and we're on a we're on a really small peninsula if you look at salinas on the map it's a really like tight little peninsula so our balcony actually is on the rear of our building, but it faces the other side of the ocean. So, and we get to see the city in between. Um, but you can just go up the coast a little ways and it's tropical. And then you go up the coast some more and you're up in kind of in the hills along the coast and it's a little cooler and more in tropical and, and rainy. Or it's, There's just microclimates all over the place. And of course, on the eastern side of the Andes, it's all Amazon. Ugh. it's, it's all amazon jungle yeah um the country itself is so like biodiverse man it's it's really crazy it's this some of everything here yeah that jungle stuff is, is it, that biodiversity is amazing uh i, I yeah. see that throughout uh central and south america it's a in the, in the green how green yeah. it can be uh, it's just amazing to me. So what's the uh, the major airport to fly into for Salinas? Um, well, if you're going to come to Salinas, you'll probably... Here's the crazy thing. Salinas actually has an airport. I can look right out my balcony right here and look right <laughs> at it. It doesn't... It's not commercial anymore because, excuse me, um, at the pan, during the pandemic, they shut it down. Uh, so I think it used to do like local flights from like here to like Guayaquil and maybe Monta and Quito and stuff like that. Quito. But otherwise, the, the biggest city in the country is Guayaquil and it's... Uh, two hours from here. The airport's like two hours and 15, 20 minutes from, from where I am. Okay. And that's a major international airport. Uh, United flies, or American Airline flies directly there. Of course, Copa does and everything, yeah. Avianca. Uh, if you fly Delta, Delta's hub is in Quito, which is kind of like on the other side of the country, in the mountains. Um, that's the other major international airport. And then Monta has an airport that flies directly to Panama now. Um, has a smaller airport, but for us here in Salinas, the closest one is Guayaquil. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. We uh, had some friends that were raving about one of the beaches in Ecuador um, not too long ago. And I can't remember which beach it was, though, but we definitely yeah. want to put thumb text through all throughout yeah, South yeah. America. So it's just time yeah. to, you know, get a little bit beyond Colombia. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I've been, I've been doing, we've done what, Columbia three times already. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you this, man. What's, um, what's, what's ne next for y'all? If you don't mind saying, if you have anything planned, like what's next for y'all um, huh. when it comes to maybe travel or, or just, even in just your channel, what you, what's, what's next for y'all? Uh, so travel, uh, probably going back to the States, to take care of some business and see family. Yeah. I, I yeah. haven't been back. Yeah, she just got back, and we need to go back again. Uh, touring South America is definitely something that we want to do. Um, and yeah. then maybe dip once or twice back into the Caribbean to hit some, some old favorite spots because it's just easier and quicker to do from yeah. here than it was from D.C. Yeah, true. Um, for the channel, uh, things are, like I said, some exciting opportunities, so... Something I'm in the process of doing now is finalizing uh, the details. I'll, I'll be offering customized tours for people who want to actually come and visit Panama. And for me, I'm keeping everything very small. So targeting couples or maybe groups of four people tops uh, to be able to really provide a unique and individualized experience for people. So. People will be able to order from uh, an a la carte menu of different tours. So you can see some monkeys or you can see some indigenous or you can just lay on the beach. <laughs> so, right. Uh, those types of things. So I'm pretty excited about that. 
um, still growing the shop. So, you know, YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful way to get information to a lot of people. Um, but the monetization, just, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so that, you know, is trying to develop uh, mechanisms and ways uh, to be able to get information to people and to be able to help uh, people get the information that they need. So uh, yeah. we still do, I, I still do consultation calls uh, with, with people that are looking to be here, uh, but the tours will be uh, another another step up and uh, put together a huge tour for my uh, class for more else awesome filming. Uh, for next June, so if anybody's watching, you know, I told y'all I was coming, so they're working on the, the mock-up for the website and everything, you'll be able to make a deposit, yeah. I like this stuff. Uh, we'll bring them here four or five days and let them see, people can do relocation stuff, and see some apartments, so uh, constantly That's looking right, to yeah. grow and expand yeah. the offering, uh, that is definitely a thing, uh, and part of my Part of my dastardly plan to unhook us from the umbilical cord of the United States. All right. So, all means, please come, like, subscribe, support. That's right. We're gonna do some things. Uh, I just, I just hosted yeah. uh, a sunset uh, Roman reggae cameraman cruise yeah. uh, about two weeks ago, and we had a ball. And uh, the best thing about that was I, I, I set aside a group of tickets to just invite some of the locals who have been so pivotal in helping us yeah. get here, you know, listening to me butcher your language. Uh, you right, know, it's, right, it's, right. It's, it's still helping me out, not laughing at me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, and then Panama is such an international place. So when I first got here, I assumed everybody that spoke Spanish was Panamanian. That's, that's the wrong thing. So we had Venezuelans, we had Nicaraguans, uh, I think, I think I was it. I don't think anybody from Ecuador. Oh, Colombia, uh, on the right. boat, and, and and a couple of Panamanians as well as some Canadians, some Jamaicans showed up, and a whole bunch of American expats. So um, I'll be doing another one of those again in a month or so. Uh, so if you're in it, if you're in Panama, by all means, come out and hang out with Big Will. You can yeah, find yeah. me Big Will TV. It's the channel Big you Will can TV. find me there. BigWillTV.com is the website. So. Either way, it's Big Wheel TV. Yeah, I'm, I'll make sure all that is in the uh, description of the video. And look, y'all, mutual gracias. Hopefully, hopefully y'all, hopefully we didn't lose y'all. You know, in the conversation, or whatever. But you know, we hopefully right. gave like a lot of good information. I run my mouth. I'm sorry. I really appreciate. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, you good. You good. I need. I, I, I sometimes I just got to vent a little bit, you know, and I like it. Um, That's what yeah, you gotta keep I, it I, doing. I appreciate the fact. I was saying, I'm sorry. I appreciate, man, you even coming and doing this with me. And um, yeah, like I said, all this information is going to be in the description. Uh, and hey, look, if you're watching this video and you see it linked from, you know, Will social media or whatever, and you don't really know who I am, go ahead and subscribe to our channel too. I really appreciate it. And right. <laughs> get that plug in. Um, but uh, Will, oh, what, do you want any uh, of your like contact information? If you want, you can send it to me. I can put it in the description. Anything like you know, email, phone number, anything like that. But yeah, anything you give me, I'll put it in the description and make sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Don't keep it simple. Yeah. Uh, BigWillTV.com. Uh, you can get to me through there or through the YouTube channel. That's really the best yeah. way to get in contact with me at this point. Uh, oh, Facebook. Uh, Big Will TV is a page on Facebook. Yeah. You can go there, and actually, that does link to my WhatsApp. So you can actually hit me cool. on the hip. Um, if you get to that Facebook page and something that I want to uh, pull your coattail to, I'm going to be doing a black man living abroad forum uh, for my channel pretty soon. I definitely want you to be in the mix for that one to share we'll more do. about the, the story about Ecuador because I want to hear some more about what's yeah. going on south of me. Hey, 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 yeah. did you know that there's an active volcano in Colombia right now? No. But we had an earthquake last week. Did y'all? <laughs> I don't want to scare y'all. It was a 6.2. We all good. We all good. We all good. No yeah. damage. No damage. No damage. But I'm in a high rise. I'm on the 18th floor. And this joint hey. swayed a little bit. Hey. 
I know. We we had the six point eight. We had the six point eight here, and it was it wasn't that far from where we are uh, a few weeks ago. And we were in the in the, our living room, and it was swaying. My wife was like, "Oh my god, what do we need to do?" <laughs> and a whole lot we can do up here on the thirteenth floor right now. So, right, 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 <laughs> just, just 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 ride it out. See what happens. See what's gonna happen? Gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the earthquake was due to the volcano. But it was it was just in the, the local paper here. I just it, I think it's interesting because right. it's it's spewing smoke as we speak right now, and they expect it to erupt any day now. But I mean, Colombia is not concerned. It's not like it's in a populated area, but it's still a volcano. Right. And since both right. of us are right next right. to Colombia, we probably might feel some. <laughs> you never know that ash can go everywhere, and yeah, yeah, right, right, right. crazy. Keep your head down. Uh, Keep your head down, man. Keep your head down. Yeah. Anyway, man, look, like I said, thanks again. And y'all, thanks for watching. And, you know, tune back into the channel, me and Will's channel, and, and we'll be around. So thanks for watching. Ciao.